Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews. Now today we're looking at Corsair's new Graphite 760T full tower case. This is pretty much the follower of the absolutely amazing, albeit a tiny bit loud, Graphite 600T case, which I built a system in with the help of some friends a couple of years ago. Really like that case. Now, as you can see, it's already out of the box because unboxing cases is a nightmare. But I'm gonna show you the packaging first. Um, it is packaged with this very, very lovely soft foam, so probably one of the best bits about this case is how it's packaged. Really nice soft foam. Would maybe like to see foam all around, but let's face it, unless someone's stabbing it with a knife, that's not gonna hurt too bad. But then, what I really like, a soft cloth um, thing that they put over the case, so when you pull it off, you don't get a, sh a static shock like you get with so many cheaper cases. There's also a little booklet in there with some warranty and stuff that no one ever reads. So I'm gonna get this out of the way and bring the case in. Alright guys, this is what the case looks like once you get it out of the box. The side panel, which is, you know, a massive acrylic window, has a uh, peel off bit of plastic, as well as the other plastic black window on the other side, but you can't really see through it, so I don't know why I just called it a window, because it's just shiny black paint on a piece of plastic. There's also a piece of paper tape holding the front thing in place, but let's start off with a really, maybe slightly too detailed look around the case. And I'm going to start off with my favorite feature of this case, the bottom. Now, a lot of people will know that I am quite, quite fond of a lovely bottom. And the thing that I like most about this are the uh, like the really nicely angled feet on this case. Very lovely, sharp, angled feet. Almost giving me a foot fetish, I must say. And, well, you see some screws here. Now, you get two hard drive brackets, so they unscrew from here. They do use screws instead of rivets, so quite easy, albeit not as easy as other um, hard drive cages to remove and then you can stack them up but let's go to the front first now can I zoom out? I cannot zoom out so let's just put the case a bit further backwards always professional of course here at Unicorn Reviews now let's undo the plastic tape peels right off and what it protects is this front front uh, grill now it's not as awesome as with the Fractal R4. Now, as I as you saw with the thing falling out, there aren't any hinges on there. It's just slots that it slots into. And let's just put this one on the side, shall we? Oh, by the way, it has a very, very open dust filter thing in there, so it's very unlikely to filter most dust. Now we get dual AF 140L fan. So these are a red LED fan. We'll show you that later when we put power on there. Maybe something cool because it looks OEM-ish is the, uh, the optical base. So this one is one of the those that flips open but you only get one of them. Not three and you also don't get another blank one to put here. But do we really care? I don't really think so because well if you buy a case that has optical slots chances are you're going to use one. Or you're just going to put a massive reservoir in there. Now, you can put two 80 millimeter radiators in there, as well as 120 millimeter. Well, yeah, 120, 140, 240, and 280 radiators will fit. And thickness-wise, it doesn't really matter. But we're going to go into the inside of the case later because it's time for the top. Now, what we see here is a power button, quite a big power button. Next to it is a reset button, which also doubles as a hard drive activity light, which makes it look as if your reset button is just begging you to reset the computer at any time. Next to it, two USB 3s, two USB 2s, a fan controller, which I'm going to go on a little rant about later. And then we have, of course, audio in and out, audio in, audio out. Now, another thing is this magnetic top. Also, cool thing, this case will actually stand on its front. 
This is the only case I know that does that. But no venting through here, it just has a few magnets on there. And what it does is it covers up the really cheap looking top, which you can just completely see through. Now I complained on the 200R by Corsair that they did this. However, with this case, it's, it's slightly stronger and you can put just about any radiator in there that has three fans on it. Also, because there are a lot of holes and the holes... Now, radiator-wise, I should just restart this one, but radiator-wise, it's centered, but it has holes everywhere, so you could probably get away with mounting the radiator off-center so you, you can get bigger radiators in. So, I started off with my most favorite part of the case, the bottom. I'm now going to show you my least favorite part of the case, of the outside of the case, because I'm not too happy with this case at all. The top. Now, it has some room here for radiators, but only all-in-one liquid coolers, because let's face it, if you're going to go with a custom loop, chances are you might just put a absolutely massive radiator like a 50 or an 80 mil and then you can't go push pull anymore um, then there's the 120, 140 millimeter pre-installed AF fan now this one doesn't have LEDs which I actually think is a good thing because I hate lights in a case if I want light I'll just buy a light but yeah other people might have different opinions but then moving to a bit lower there's nine so get this nine PCI expansion card slots. Now they don't do Excel ATX motherboards anymore. They did it a little bit when Sandy just came out, but they stopped doing it afterwards because it's just completely pointless. So why this one has so much room in there, I have no idea. If they were gonna make the case this high, I would have preferred eight slots and then a tiny bit more room in the top for radiators. But then, the part that really pisses me off in a 180 euro case, get that one, so that's $200 I guess. Metal grommets for external water cooling. Now I know you shouldn't be doing external water cooling in the first place, but if you're stupid enough to do it, you don't get rubber grommets with it. There is however a Kensington lock there, and for some reason this is all blank metal instead of having it vented like every other case ever. So I don't like the back of the case at all. However, nice room here for a power supply. You can install it both ways because there is a dust filter, albeit slightly narrow, this dust filter, but there is a dust filter. It goes out easily and it's very easy to relocate or just put it in when you cleaned it off. Moving to the side, there's this massive... I absolutely hate that noise. I don't know why they can't do it, that it doesn't make that noise. But yeah, this is a, this is just the side. It's a smoked out, so you guys, yeah, from the viewfinder you can't actually see what's inside the case. Um, but in real life you can see through it. It is very reflective though. But on the side here we have this handle, and it just completely hinges open the case. You can then lift the panel up off of the hinges, and so as you can see it is pretty see-through. But yeah. So let's put this one aside here. Also, quick little rants. Sometimes when you shut it and you hold the, uh, the thing, so you have to hold it. There are magnets in there, but you have to do the hinge open to put it in, unless you're just slamming the door shut. And sometimes it will lock on in a bit where it's slightly open and it can rattle around a little bit, but if you just tap it afterwards, you don't have that problem. So inside the case, we are going to start off with the dual triple hard drive base now these are one of the annoying toolless things that you have to flex open let's see if i can find a hard drive here there we go cheap ass actually very expensive server grade hard drive um, so you have to bend it to get it in and then just slide it in like so I mean, it works, but I don't like those that you have to flex open. Some, like, slide open, I, I prefer those. But you can put this cage on top of this cage, or you can hang it from the top. You can pretty much relocate them as you please. Now, in the top, 
because we do have three optical bays, you get three toollessly removable optical bays. What we also get, and I'm just, am I gonna, yeah, I'm gonna bring the case in a bit closer. There we go. So you get four fingers of room for radiator, so that will help you put in anything up to, I don't know, a single radiator with a single fan and the radiator can't be thicker than 40 millimeters, let's put it that way. So 65, maybe 70 millimeters of room. However, as I said earlier, you can mount it offset using the non-standard holes if you want to. We have a very, very large CPU cutout and some more room here to route cables through from your, um, from your, like the rear fan, for example, or of course the radiator. Now, quick rant here, there are rubber grommets here and they're decent, you can pull them out quite easily but not with just installing cables, you do ha actually have to pull them but there are no rubber grommets, where's my finger, here's my finger no grommets here, kinda sucks doesn't it now, moving down we get three of those and then we have two more vertical grommets here and this is where another quick rant starts because your ATX board is going to be two centimeters above the top of the power supply. So why didn't they just put a horizontal hole there to put all your um, I.O. connectors? So all your USB 2s, your audio for example, all that should have gone through there because now it's going to hang off uh, you know, above your power supply. It's just going to look ugly. Nobody wants that except Corsair apparently. So talking about front I.O. We have, of course, our USB 2 connector, our USB 3 connector, as well as SATA power for our fan controller, with built-in fan controller, of course. We have another USB. Did I show this one already? Okay, I was wrong. Okay, so this is audio, long audio cable and a shorter USB cable. SATA's and then front connectors, as well as four uh, fan, fan mounts. Now, they're already three fans in there so you'll have room for one additional fan which you could of course put here in the bottom if you remove this cage and reposition it here or hang it from the top now other than that it's a pretty simple design though now one thing I am gonna say this is no problem for example with an ATX board because then the ATX board clears this thing if you are gonna put an XL ATX uh, motherboard in there you will have to reposition this guy because it will be hitting on the second hard drive cage. Also, Corsair has pre-installed the motherboard standoffs for ATX, so if you're going to put an MATX board in there, make sure to relocate some of the pins. And if you're going from an MATX to an ATX, make sure to undo this one because it will short out your motherboard. Cool feature, as most Corsair cases have actually, is the center ATX um, standoff it has a pin that sticks out to you. Slide your motherboard in, click it in, and go over there, and then the motherboard is fixed, so you don't have to push it with one hand while you're trying to get a screw in with the other. Now, moving on to the other side of the case, it's actually accessory box. Everybody loves accessory boxes except Corsair because. I already did this part, of course, and this is, yeah, this is poor. That's all you get accessory-wise. None of the bags are labeled. No additional motherboard standoffs. Just a few fan screws. Um, also, two, uh, four longer um, screws for fans or for radiators or whatever. But seriously, Corsair 180 euro case should come with quite a bit more accessories. Now, moving on to, I don't know if this is the left or the right, depends on how you look at it, doesn't it? Lovely feet, though. And again, we have this plastic peel-off thingy. Now, I really have to do this, so very shiny. I'm not going to pull it off all the way because I hate the noise it makes. But, as you can see, maybe, this is just a black thing. Also, autofocus does not like it when you move your camera around. But again, Lift it up over the pins. Now, reinstalling it is a bit tricky. Can I do it with one hand? Nope, I cannot really. Oh, I did. Cool. So it is a bit tricky to reinstall it, but it's not 
the hardest thing in the world to do. So moving on to the back, one of the most important things I think with cases is how much room there is between the motherboard and the side panel, especially with a side panel that closes by a hinge because you can't just sit on it and shove it and screw it in real tight and hope to never open it again. But with this case, get one and a half fingers of room, which is around three centimeters. It's an awful lot of room. And, you know, of course it's slightly less here at the top because this is like a recessed bit. But yeah, why are there no grommets in there? I don't know. Pretty cool thing. So you do have a bunch of zip tie or twist tie mounts. So you have here, 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 there, there, some here, and then some more there. A lot of them. Now, there's also a hole here. I hate the lag on my viewfinder, but yeah, so some hole here. Again, not grommeted. But then there is the worst invention in the history of inventions. The SSD mounting system. So what you can do, I'm going to go and get an SSD. There we go. Cheap OS SSD from back in the old days. And what you do is you just put it in there. So you can put it in this way so you can show off from the other side what SSD you're running or the other way as well. So let's put it in the room the way you should if you're a show off. It is, yeah, I don't like the mount, I just don't like the mount. You can take these off of course and I suggest you do and just, I don't know, double tape, double sided tape your SSDs to the back for example. But I don't like these mounting things. Also, what I really really don't like because a lot of us are going to remove the second hard drive cage. And then there's this massive gaping hole here. I mean, you can put your fist in there. That's a massive hole. And it's not grommeted. It's not coverable. It's just a giant hole showing off your cables when you look at it from the other side. And then still, you have to open up both. So you open both the doors to get a hard drive in. And then you have to like get the SATA cable because those are on the other side. It's really not that convenient. But yeah, if you take everything off and then put another black piece of metal or wood or something to blank it off in there, it will actually look good. Other than that though, you know, I'm very happy with all the black cables that we get. They're pre-zip tied so you will have to cut them off. I would like to see more twist tied because, you know, you are wasting a bunch of plastic that way. But I'm going to put a uh, small build in there, not a full build. And then we skip to the conclusion part of the video. Alright guys, quick look at the case now that the fans are powered up. I first thought it was a 5, 7 and 12 volt fan controller. It's actually only 7 and 12, which means that... Well, it does make a little bit less noise because the noise this thing makes is... Like the 600T, absolutely horrible and it will only get worse as dust goes in. But... What really just annoys me with LED fans is that the LEDs also get less bright as you put the fans down. So you can't have it at maximum cooling but without light. And there's also no button or anything to turn the fans off completely. And given that I absolutely hate lights in a computer, that uh, kind of shows as well. That, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this case. Uh, I think I made that very clear before I even started, but I have to say now that there is some stuff in there It's not as bad as I thought it would be now looking at the side as I said earlier this hinge when you have it open when you close it There's some like a little bit of Wobble there, but if you tap it in place it is fixed in there, but let's open it up so that's I guess the cool thing with this case and the hinges that it has that you can easily open it up and work on it uh, without having to undo any thumb screws. It's also, you know, if you're gonna like get a girl to come to your room, you should just say, oh, come check out the inside of my 760T and all the girls will come here, really. Or if you're a girl, the boys will come to your yard without having to make any milkshakes. Pretty cool stuff. Now, I think you can make an incredibly clean looking build in this case. However, the whole idea with the SSDs that go in there and then show stuff 
it doesn't really work for me. I, I really don't think it work, works and I personally would blank it off. And then there's the other thing, like these cables I said I was afraid for because you don't have any grommets here. Now the reason why it looks stupid is first of all because I didn't put like an all-in-one liquid cooler in there. If you do put that in then at least the top is covered. But then you still have a few centimeters of wasted room here in the bottom. Now these cables therefore are also just hanging off there. Now the, you could put them through this, this grommet right here and you can make it look slightly decent but then you're still stuck with the HD audio cable there. And yeah I just don't like it. I really don't like it when a motherboard is overpowered by the size of the case. I mean, you can put another ATX motherboard right here next to it, and that's without exaggerating. And I know a lot of people will even put one of the narrower ASRock boards in there, and it will look even dumber. Now, good thing though is that you have ample room for graphics cards because this case is 56.4 centimeters long. And I reckon you can probably get a 55 centimeter long graphics card in there. But they don't do those yet. So, yeah, compatibility with everything. I mean, you can put the biggest air coolers in there, biggest graphics cards, biggest motherboards, and it won't be a problem. The thing is, unless you put the absolute most ridiculous biggest stuff ever in there, it will look overpowered by, by just the sheer size of the case itself. And I, I just don't like the way it looks. Now, a lot of people will like the way this case looks, and, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, they say, so... I think it's just a really ugly case, and with that in mind, I'm not going to give it any award at all. I'm very sorry to Corsair for that, but it's just so ugly and so overpriced. Now, if this case was 50 euros cheaper, it would get bronze or silver, but... Yeah, it's, it's just not my thing. Anyway, if this was your thing and you liked the video, please go ahead and press the like button. If you dislike the video, press the dislike button or press no button at all. Leave a comment saying on what you think about this. If you like the video, you can even share it to all your friends using the share button right below the video. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe to Unicorn Reviews for more reviews, as the channel name would suggest. Thank you all very much for watching.